Now, um, you're all very welcome. This is the um, last in a series of um, talks that were funded by Creative Ireland um, and facilitated by Mayo County Council. Um, on Plan Air was the name of the series of uh, workshops and talks. Um, Joe gave a, a workshop called The Activity of Drawing. And now uh, he's going to talk to us about his work. Um, feel free to ask questions along the way. And I'll pass it over to you, Joe. Right. OK, well, well by, first of all, maybe I'll just give us um, a, a bit of a background, as you can tell from listening to me, I'm not from Ireland. I'm from Manchester originally, a place called Bolton. Um, and um, I was a student in Manchester and I was introduced to Ireland uh, in about 1973 as a consequence of um, hill walking. Uh, so that's basically where I, 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 I get all my, um, I suppose, uh, inspiration to work from is walking the hills and Ireland was a gem. I, I came over in 73, had never been before, uh, went to the Burren and fell in love and that was it. So I was hooked. So I was coming over frequently. But to just uh, backtrack a little bit, if you look at some of these images here, um, I was always interested in the landscape as a as an activity, a physical thing that was act that was active, doing things. So that so consequently, I mean, when I was a student and just after, I was doing lots of things like measuring rivers and things, measuring how deep they were and what the wave forms were like over it, and and I made uh, little machines that simulated waves in rivers and things. So that's that's the sort of uh, things I was I was interested in. I wasn't painting at the time. I did a lot of photography. I did not, uh, an incredible amount of black and white photography. Um, in those days, it was the, um, you know, what we used to call wet bed photography, you develop the film and so on. And, and uh, so I, I actually started to um, take a lot of photographs. And what, what fascinated me about the landscape was traces of uh, evidence of things happening in the landscape and, and so on. Um, and so a, a lot of photographs I took were, were about uh, looking at things like that, traces. And so sometimes they were of, uh, of larger areas and sometimes they were of uh, smaller areas. Um, and this, this, this photograph here is very simply, it's a, it's a farmyard uh, with the, the gate producing these traces in the mud in, in the farmyard. Um, and this one here, is interesting. This is where I started getting quite interested in the scale of photographs and actually leaving reference points out or in or whatever, um, because this is kind of um, ambiguous in terms. It could be an aerial photograph of something, but in actual fact, again, it's just a pavement in in uh, in, the, in a farmyard. So this sort of idea of looking down on things was uh, was something that fascinated me. But the the main thing that drove me was the, my fascination with how landscape behaved, um, how the landscape was interrupted by us. And um, very, very much, I, I was very interested in just looking at way fields interrupted natural things. And, and this idea of the, the idea of natural, what is natural? And in, in a way I, I've grown to, be, to understand and, and think very strongly that really um, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the natural forces in, in a way. And I mean that physically, you know, and that's really what the, a lot of the work um, is, uh, tends to be about. Um, but uh, as I say, I was doing an awful lot of photography and a, a friend of mine who was, um, who was uh, an archeologist um, asked me to join uh, archeological excavations. And I did two seasons of that. And um, it fascinated me. Um, it, it fascinated me because this team of archeologists, the, these people who were, were looking at the landscape for very particular reasons. And that fascinated me that they, they were part of a team examining the landscape. And these are uh, photographs that they had to do to, to provide evidence of what they'd found. These are post holes of houses from, I can't remember the dates of them. I was never actually interested in the history thing. It was the process and the, um, the, the, the actual process they used. And I actually learned how to travel and excavate and things like that. So this, this idea of looking at the landscape from a vantage point, shall we say, to look at um, how things, how the, how the landscape actually behaved, uh, fascinated me. And then in, in 19, so I, as I say, I fell in with Ireland, I was coming over um, 
twice a year to go hill walking in the west of Ireland and places like that. Um, and I was fascinated, especially in rural Ireland, at, at the way the, the, um, the landscape behaved, with, uh, the interaction between the, the so-called natural and, the, and man doing things to it, you know. Um, and um, this is the sort of thing I was doing. These are very large, well, quite large photographs. I mean, that top photograph there is two meters by a uh, meter and a half. And I would do the, develop these myself in my own dark room, which was a converted bathroom with the, the enlarger on stools and tables to project the image. And it was fascinating because the exposure took about 45 minutes to, to expose. And it, you couldn't do anything. You couldn't move. You couldn't walk around the room. You had to stand there for you know, 40 minutes or so and watch this light burning into the paper. And it, it really fascinated me. Uh, to this, this landscape was kind of growing. And again, there's this um, um, traces of what's been happening in the landscape is, is um, fascinating me. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the, I, was, I was always looking for vantage points to look down on things or across to things, across valleys. And this is, I, I forgot where this is now, somewhere down in Kerry. Um, and um, again, this sort of ambiguity, I'm not quite sure what's going on until you realise that these are walls going up the hillside. Um, so that, that's the sort of thing I was, I was busy doing. Um, and uh, I collect, just enjoy, enjoying walking in the landscape, physically being in the landscape and looking at evidence of what's going on, what's going on in the landscape. And things like this, I, I, this is sort of near Giant's Causeway somewhere, I think, uh, where again, the evidence of, of, of um, physical change and physical in, interaction uh, between different things and of course then you've got these uh, small little, this is a, a little graveyard tucked away uh, somewhere in Dingle I think somewhere um, and again this, uh, the, this is this, this thing of interrupting the landscape by what we do and then other forces come in and wear it down and change it and so on yeah. um, and so now I now I've moved to Ireland and this is what I got up to as soon as I moved to Ireland and just walking the hills and, and mountains of uh, Connemara and places that's not me on the end of that there that's a friend of mine I was with you know? but uh, the 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 whole thing of being in it was uh, was what what I was what I was interested in rather than um, sort of observing it from a distance I had to be in in the as it were um, where are we now? Um, but, and then I, I, I moved to, uh, but when I first came to Ireland, I, I was living in Limerick and I taught at the art school in Limerick. Um, and then I got a, a job in the NCAD in Dublin and moved up to Dublin about 83 or four and moved to Wicklow. Um, and that's where I've been ever since, uh, 35, 40, 40, 30, 35 years been here now. Um, and I, I, I started to explore the area around there, but I also then started to, um, uh, funnily enough, um, started drawing and doing, uh, making notes on, on the spots of things and so on, but also experimenting with the activity of um, drawing. Um, and this one here is actually a print. It's a dry point uh, print. And the plate itself is a meter square. And I literally worked outside with that, with, a, with an electric drill and a grinder and so on. And um, uh, so again, the, the, the actual na nature, the activity of, of, of drawing became fascinating. And that, that became just as fascinating as actually walking and collecting evidence. So it, it, the, the, the activity moved between um, exploring the landscape and collecting information and then bringing it back to the studio and reinvestigating it, re-looking at what I brought back. And um, that's, that, that, that became a, a, a thing that really took, uh, grabbed me uh, as, as an activity. Uh, and this, this continued, this extended then into the activity of painting. Well, this is a built painting. The, 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 that's about three meters by two meters, but it's also built out by about a meter uh, by bits of wood, strips of wood and so on. And the, the, the building became part of the painting. So again, the, 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 it became an adventure with the, with the painting, with the painting itself. 
Um, and uh, uh, th this this carried on quite a long time now with, uh, with, with various places around the locality in uh, in, in Wicklow, sorry, um, uh, in Wicklow. This is uh, from Bray Head, looking down onto the lakes and so on. Again, exploiting vantage points. It, it, I, I couldn't get away from that, looking down on things, looking across to things and looking, um, as I say, uh, down on, but also emphasizing various things, like emphasizing various things like the foreground would be built out. And somehow, I don't know, I, I don't know why I did that, but it, see, it seemed to be something to do with inviting you to get to join the painting, as it were. So it sounds a bit strange, but it, it was a bit like that. You know? um, and I, I, I did, did every summer because I was teaching, my wife was teaching as well. We, every summer we would just take off to the west and um, explore all around uh, uh, Connemara and uh, Achill Island, actually. And uh, again, I, I got very interested in um, um, the scale of things. Um, this. I'll uh, just sh show you this one. I, I borrowed a friend of mine's studio up in uh, Achille Island. And it frightened me to death, actually. Uh, I spent five weeks doing this drawing. Uh, and it's a, it's a panorama from um, uh, Achille Head right over to De Gort and uh, Sleeve Moor. And the, 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 that uh, measurement there, that last measurement there is wrong. It's actually 14 meters by two meters. Um, and I, I remember distinctly building that wall. It's uh, 48 feet long. And I, I put this big roll of paper up and looked at it. And I thought, what the hell have I started? So I closed the door and went to the pub and came back, <laughs> came back later. Uh, but that, uh, again, what was interesting was uh, on the, uh, when I finished the drawing, the, a child came in from the area um, and um, he came into, the, into the, the studio there and started walking up the road that he knows, but uh, through the drawing. And that, that, I thought that was lovely, so, but, but the scale, he, he was seeing that as the real road almost. You know? So again, I, it's, um, the, uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure why I attempted something that big, but it turned out to be an, 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 an adventure, which was great. I, I kind of loved it. You know? So then I, I, I was doing this quite on a regular basis, wasn't particularly interested in it. I mean, I had a few exhibitions, but I wasn't particularly concerned about that. But then um, I was invited um, uh, by um, a publishing company called Occasional Press, who were based in, well, they, the editor uh, was in Limerick and the, uh, the uh, sorry, the producer and editor was in Cork and the designer was in Limerick, Dave Lilburn and Jim Savage. Um, and they invited, they invited artists to do uh, work about Connemara um, and they would produce a book about it. And um, so they invited me to do um, a book, uh, which is this one. Um, and um, I decided that uh, I wanted to do it about the 12 bends particularly. And the reason I thought about that was it was an enclosed focused thing that the, the ring of the 12 bends uh, enclosed as a kind of an amphitheater. Um, and so I, I did the circuits of the, of the 12 bends several times and collecting information, collecting notes, um, making notes, making small drawings and also small photographs. Um, and and that, that led to the production of this book. Um, the interesting thing about a book is that it sort of implies that there's a kind of a narrative that you, you, you can't see it all at once. You, um, you, you can start at the beginning and I, and I believe the, the designers worked it out that it would be, um, the, the, it would start from one end of the, the horseshoe, the drawings and things would be from one end of the horseshoe and you work round to the top when you're up on the on Ben Core and places like that, and then down the other side. So uh, th that was interesting that I'd never thought of uh, uh, seeing things in a, a, a narrative form. But again, this led to all sorts of um, uh, more work about the 12 Bends and- um, uh, Joe, just, um, just for our foreign um, 
guests here on Zoom, could could you say like what kind of area does I mean we're getting the sense of the scale of it now here in this foot with this yeah. photograph, but what kind of area you because you're walking this how yes yeah um well you're talk, you're talking about um, I suppose yeah about uh, in terms of distance what what what's 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 kind of our, I can't actually think how big it is but it, it's it's um, you're talking about if, if, to a walk in these hills around here would be about six hours uh, for 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 me. But I would I, obviously you wouldn't go alone because it's too dangerous. Yeah. Um, but they, there's a <laughs> there's actually a little story behind uh, when I move on to uh, here. Uh, you can see that that that's the drawing done from the same place as that photograph was taken. Um, and I was working up there again. That size is, is about five, about four meters by about a meter and a half, something like that. Um, and I was working on uh, drawings and ink drawings and things up there. Um, and then suddenly, it was a lovely day. And then suddenly, the sky went black. Um, so I um, quickly uh, mopped up the ink and stuff with that I was using and came back down. And I just got back to the car, and a massive, massive snowstorm came in. You know. Uh, so I was very lucky and I was on my own. I shouldn't have been on my own. But to, to go back to the scale, yeah, the, I mean, you're, you're talking about uh, that. I think the 12 Bends circuit is about, you know, going back in miles now, I think it's about eight or nine miles or something like that, isn't it? I, I, I can't actually remember. But that's the sort of scale you're talking about. You know? But, but the, 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 uh, the other thing is that, is that obviously um, the, the, the thing that, that fascinates me now. If you're spending a day in the in the mountains, the, the change because of light and everything is, is another thing that comes into play, um, and and different times of the year and so on. But I I, I didn't go consciously to uh, to say well I'm going to do a winter one now or I'm going to do a summer one now. I I just simply enjoyed the the subtle changes of uh, of the of the light and stuff on any day because I mean whether anybody knows the, that area of uh, Connemara or anywhere in the West things can change extremely rapidly extremely rapidly, which is fascinating. I like that. You know. um, so again, this led to a, a series of drawings and, and paintings uh, for the book. Um, and the whole, the whole point about it was that the, it, it, I hoped that it would take you back into the mountains, that the book would lead you into the mountains. As, as uh, somebody who, who was it who made a, a, a comment about it, it's, uh, if you can't go to the mountains, Joe's book will take you there. Yeah. Which I, I thought was a lovely thing to say, actually. But, um, uh, it, it the the um, the the work is about uh, repossessing my experiences of being there. And another interesting thing as well, I know uh, because one or two people asked me about it, and it, it reminded me about talking about things in college and so on. Is this notion of a you know uh, a, the visual and yeah, of course it's visual. Yes, it is. But the the immersion in the whole thing is much more arresting of all the senses. Um, you know, the actual physical terrain of walking. I mean, um, what I hope that something like this would convey is that the actual effort needed to get up there and um, the actual give of the ground or the restraint, uh, the, the unforgivingness of the ground, if you like, sometimes. Um, and of course, and the wind and, the, and all that. It, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, for me anyway, the, 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 the work um, brings back the actual memory of being there. That's, that's really what I, uh, I, I, I keep, I, I keep coming back to say. You know? um, now the so that that was the the twelve bends and what was interesting I started to build work around projects uh, and sometimes I set up the project but sometimes sometimes people like the occasional press would invite me to do something yeah so as a consequence of um, this uh, this book and the exhibitions there were two two exhibitions that went with it um, um, the um, Catherine Hammond from the Catherine Hammond Gallery, which is no longer in existence, unfortunately, asked me to do a similar project about the Bearer Peninsula. Um, and 
so I, I, I'm again, I'm, these are areas I've visited many, many times. So I was, I, I, I kind of knew what I was letting myself in for. But there's a, there's a discovering something, and then there's a rediscovering something. Um, and the, the area in the bear that I chose to examine um, and revisit was a, an area in a, the locally known as the pocket. Uh, which is uh, the Escatariff Ridge of Mountains that is right on the Cork Kerry border in, the, in that peninsula, the, uh, the Bear Peninsula. And it, jo it is part of the, a range of mountains called the Caja Mountains. Um, so I um, made visits, parked my little caravan, I have a little caravan, uh, parked my little caravan in, um, some, uh, in Glengariff where uh, the gallery where, the, where I was going to have the exhibition was going to be, parked the caravan there and uh, Catherine Hammonds was a great hostess who used to just let me stay in her grounds and so on. Um, and I'd spend two or three weeks at a time down there in the bear in my little caravan going out and collecting information, coming back, doing small drawings, going back out to collect more information. And the whole thing was about walking this ridge, the whole circuit. I think I did it for this project. I think I did that circuit. The Escatariff Ridge is smaller than the 12 bends, but it's still a good, a good day's hike. It, it, it'd, be, it'd be six hours out. Uh, but you see that I would take the whole day, especially in the summer, I go out early and stay out till seven or eight o'clock at night. Um, just walking around, taking, I, I, I do take a lot of photographs, but they're not, they're not photographs of a complete thing. They're um, elements that I would then work on and uh, readjust back at the back at the studio and uh, bring new things into existence from those. Um, so I, the 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 find the the pieces of work weren't conceived with the, with the camera. They, they they were just notes, like notes in a notebook. And I'll I'll come into something in, uh, later on when I in terms of the plein air thing as well. Um, I, I mentioned so, some of the other things I used to do outside in terms of drawing. But let's just stick with this particular project at the moment. Um, and th this led to uh, paintings like this. Uh, I, I was very interested, uh, and I don't know how it happened in in like panels that the, the first of all I, I did a lot of like if you look back at that one did a lot of things on a square format now that's deliberate and I kind of got used to it um, to try and break away from the standard landscape feeling mm -hmm. uh, so you don't just scan the horizon like that it, it, you, it, if, if there was any procedure it was like from my feet up all the time was doing that. So consequently, I was, I was, I was um, deliberately working in these uh, these panels. And um, sorry. Uh, and what I was, became aware of as well, which was I found interesting, was that they tend to work individually. They were quite interesting sort of um, things in their own right, but they also um, work together um and uh, coordinated so i did a few of these things then that were like i thought quite interesting on their own but they all still work together so th that's a, another aspect that i started to work with um this is uh, this is slight deviation from the pocket that's walking up hungry hill um and um, again the, 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 the bit of a word about the sort of way i paint i i very 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 I, if i said even even on things like this, I would never use brushes. That I'd be sponges or rags or something like. That. Very very rarely would I use a brush. Um, and same with all these. These are all done with palette with a palette knife. And uh, the medium is oil paint. But uh, some of the things uh, you can see the, the the heavy the heavy texture here. That's got wax mixed with it. But also some of them are quite have got glazes really. So the oil paint is is uh, mixed with. Um, it's a Winsor and Newton thing called liquid, so you can so you can let down the oil paint so it becomes quite, uh, uh, as I say, quite liquid. So you can use it as glazes. You can go over the top of um, uh, uh, dry paint and then scrape away and so on. So again, the surface becomes active, and and so it becomes an adventure with painting. And as, it's sort of like painting plays tricks on you. It sort of behaves itself or it misbehaves. And in a way, uh, I, I, I see it's, 
a bit like the land itself in a way. It's, um, but it, it's, it, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just about the uh, 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 physicality that, I mean, you, you, it's, not, it's not a, uh, a predictable process. It can go wrong as well. But um, uh, the more you do, I suppose, the, the easier it gets. But um, so th th again, this is all done with the uh, uh, palette knife on board and so on. But um, some of them, I could just go, let me go back to this one, I think. Yeah, that one. Um, no, actually, no, I won't. I'll show you something later on that's done that's a bit clearer about that. But um, the, uh, yeah, I saw, as I say, I deviated slightly from the pockets on this project and went out further down Caja Mountains, and this is going up Hungry Hill. Um, so, um, that was that project, which was, uh, 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 in a way, it, it does tend to wrap up a body of work, which is nice. And uh, the exhibition was went on in uh, Glengarry. Actually, she'd moved to Skibbereen by then, and it was on in Skibbereen. Um, so, but then, then I uh, was invited. Well, I, I applied and got uh, gracefully, gracefully accepted um, uh, the offer of to, to become a, a, mem a member of the foundation in Balling Glen, the, the, the center in Balling Glen. And um, I uh, did a residency there. And um, uh, it, it, was, it was funny though, because I, I, I felt a bit lost because whilst I've done a lot, done, done a lot of traveling to, to the West, uh, uh, the North Mayo, uh, I tended to neglect, and I, I didn't really know much about North Mayo at all. I mean, the, the nearest mountains were the, are the Nephins, and um, I'd visited those, but from the southern side, I'd, I'd, re I'd, I'd been up to see the Cajun Fields, yeah, but I hadn't really spent much time there. Um, so I, I set off to join the uh, five weeks, six weeks residency, and when I, and I, I, I I felt, God, I'm lost. Or what am I going to do? There's no mountains. There's no mountains at all. What am I going to do? And um, I resisted the the temptation. But I, I, I really probably will be, hopefully, a, a, another day. But I resisted the temptation of working with the magnificent, dramatic coastline and the sea and so on. Um, I resisted that because I went, mm, I, I. I wanted to do something else about them. So I turned myself inland and just worked in the locality of Balling Glen. Um, but I, and, and, and further, further along to Ben Wee and places like that. And these are the sort of things I, I started to do, which were, and that's uh, just across the Balling Glen River looking towards Ballycastle. Um, and again, this this feeling of, sorry, this, this process of working in, in panels um, I enjoyed as well. So the, these things were were very different, um, but it did remind me uh, to go right back to the early days of when I first got fascinated with what happens in the landscape, the, the, all the fields and things which, you know, the landscape kind of bursts and warps uh, with the activities in the land, but then you've got the activities of us disturbing the land and doing things with it. So there's an interaction there. There's an interaction um, between um, activities that we do and activities that the land does. But in a way, the, I see them both as forces of nature, to be honest. Um, and so th I got, did a, a body of work uh, over that five weeks um, uh, about Balling Glen and that further down the coast, this was, um, Ben we and uh, it's over th uh, that way. Um, and I, oh, so let me just cancel that for a minute. So, oops, sorry. I'll cancel that for a minute. Um, uh, yeah, so this is this is a, a, a oil painting, uh, but with a slight difference. Um, you remember I was saying about, I, I was trying to explain something about uh, the, the method of painting I used. Um, these are pieces of paper, primed, Fabriano paper, primed with gesso. And then I would ink up a sheet of glass and with printing ink, lay the piece of paper down and draw through on with the gesso side would go down onto the uh, ink area. Now it was very thin gesso, so it wasn't too rigid, too, too, uh, 
dense. Um, and so you draw through the back like carbon paper. So the drawing would come out the other way around in a way. Um, so, uh, and then I would apply oil paint over that using palette knife uh, and let down version, uh, let down um, consistencies of oil paint. Um, and this is a, probably a clear example. You can certainly, you might be able to see some of the drawing coming through. Um, so I was very, um, uh, Balling Glen was like a shot in the arm really because the previous 12 months I would, I'd done nothing because I got this terrible arthritis in my neck and I couldn't do more than 10 minutes work at a time. So I was, I was lying fallow for about so 12 months, 10 months anyway. So this was like a shot in the arm. And I, I then really did uh, uh, consciously, it was like I'd go out in the mornings, collect information, go back to the studio and work uh, with the information, then go back out again the next day and so on. And Balling Glen is per perfect like that. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have been to either Balling Glen or places like that where you get a studio and that's it, all you can do is work. There's nothing else to do. So you work, you work like, and so I, I really enjoyed this, the you know, being on my own, just working. Um, but what, what, I, what I started to do then, the routine of uh, going out and collecting information and coming back and working with it, I continued doing that. But then towards the end, what I was doing was like, I go out and collect information and do something with it. But then the day after I would do something as a consequence of what I'd done. So the, 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 there was, it was, uh, um, I was using the inf information I'd done in the studio to generate new other stuff. You know? um, and this was, uh, this is quite, this is quite big. Uh, that's what's that, 150 centimeters by 75 centimeters. So it's two panels. Um, again, on heavy duty Fabriano uh, primed, with Gesso, can you hear me? Hello, it says my internet is breaking up, but can you hear me? Yes, Hello? can still hear you, yeah. 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 Um, uh, so again, th th this was done uh, in the same way, drawing through onto the, onto the, onto the front of the thing using a monoprinting process. Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, and that, uh, th yeah, because I was unfamiliar with the area, it, it, it was, a, a, like almost have been there the first time, so it was an exploration of the area. Um, and hence the title of the exhibition was uh, Exploring Balling Glen. You know. So that was a, another a sort of uh, call to a particular sort of project, really. Um, now, as a consequence of, of that, I was very kindly asked by Nuala and uh, Balling Glen to uh, do a workshop about working outside. Uh, and my I mean, as Newley will probably remember, when I used to work at the college, work at the NCAD and, and in Limerick, we used to take students on field trips uh, where you'd um, like to the Aran Islands or places like that. Um, and we'd go in January because it was cheaper to rent places then. And uh, students were issued with a regulation issue of um, two square meters of plastic. And we, we would go out every day and work outside in whatever weather. Uh, and uh, it was amazing how much work people got done. People couldn't believe, oh, sure, we're not going out in this, but you wouldn't know what to call a good day if you said, oh, well, we'll, we'll wait and see if it clears up. So we did, we went out and everybody um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and so I decided to, for this plein air workshop was to do a drawing activity outside. Now, unfortunately, my photographs are not great. They're, these things that happened at the end of it. We took a place just, uh, just outside, um, uh, valley Castle, um, and we found a spot to work from, looking out over the valley and so on. Um, and this is uh, four of the six, I think, six people who were working with us. And again, the, the idea was to start with one piece of paper and work on it and add more to it to extend it, to build it up. Um, and again, it was we were there from about uh, half nine till about five o'clock, stopped for lunch. But uh, the, the emphasis was on um, building the drawing rather than sort of starting in one corner and finishing it. it well, the, the, we we, we emphasise the idea of the drawing expanding in front of you and you start like start from in front of you and you work out. 
Um, and so people did some amazing things. I mean, in, in what, uh, from half nine till 12 ish, I think, and then from half one till four ish, they, they did quite a lot of work in that time. Um, they're not brilliant finishes, finished pieces of work, but the people who were on it certainly seemed to enjoy it. Um, and um, there's uh, someone else's, where are we now? Yeah. Oh, what have I done? Uh, um, uh, it won't work for me. Oh, yeah, there we are. Yeah, uh, and um, so it it worked very well. But this I was going to mention this earlier. We didn't do it on that day. But what I did, uh, like on the twelve bends projects and things, I carry a little notebook with me, and this is um, a little plastic plate, which is the same size as the page, and I have a little roller and a little and a tube of ink. And I'd roll up plates, this is sitting outside working, and I slide it in underneath, let it dry a little bit, slide it in underneath, and the drawing would be done here, and then you get the, um, the reverse on the other side. Now, you might say, well, why bother doing that? Well, first, there's two, two reasons. One, the, um, the actual print process um, is unforgiving. You, any mark you put down, it will pick up. And I, I, maybe Nula remembers this, that one, one of the mantras that, um, uh, I, I always encouraged with, with people who were drawing is no matter how light the mark, make it deliberate. Don't make anything casual. And this and, and, and th this is something that I keep doing to myself all the time. I keep arresting myself and don't let anything get casual. Try and be very deliberate. Even the smallest mark, try and make it very deliberate. Um, and this is a way of uh, that happening, whether you like it or not. And also it's in reverse. Right, so that means then that we're not trying to make an image that was is exactly the same as the one we saw. It makes you see the drawing a complete in a completely fresh way, and um, you're then back to the memory of being there the, or the, uh, the the experience of being there, rather than it just simply being a representation of drawing. Um, so again, the, these would be these would be notes for which the, the, from which I'd work um, afterwards. Um, so that, that was, uh, when was that, that was uh, November, was it, that happened, it October, when, September, isn't it? I think it was, um, when, when, we, when we did that. Um, so that's, we're coming up to date now a bit. Um, so uh, whilst, in fact, they overlapped a little bit, but whilst I um, uh, was doing the drawing, the plein air drawing, I also had an exhibition back in Wicklow in Bray, Bray Mermaid Arts Center. And again, it was a project that I set myself and then asked the mermaid, could I have an exhibition about it? And the project was the Glencree Valley, which again is another ring of hills, or sorry, horseshoe of hills with the, with the Glencree River going up the, up the middle of it. Um, and um, uh, it, it's a well-known walking circuit for um, lots of walkers, actually. They're very common, actually. Um, but I've been, uh, what's interesting about this is that I've been living in, in Glencree for uh, 35 years now. So I know the, know the place very well. There are lots of, lots of the previous work was done uh, way back in the 80s was done from Glencree. So you might say it's extremely familiar. Um, but focus on getting, uh, uh, getting another project Focused on reading, which was lovely, you know. And I, so I went out again with my little camera and my notebook and so on, and produced drawings and paint and, and things. And this led to um, more paintings about um, this is the Sugarloaf, uh, but from Prince William's seat, which is across the valley. Again, this vantage point, how the landscape, uh, how the the land uh, sort of folds and. Uh, gets warped by what's happening underneath, plus what's ever happening to um, uh, by field systems and so on. And what I always find funny was the same when I first came over to Ireland in the West was if you see how far the fields can go up, how far they they try and get the fields for grazing and whatever uh, to go up the side of the hill uh, of the mountain and so on. And it, I, it was fascinating how far up they went actually. But again, this is then having having selected the what I find fascinating, the shapes, the fields, and so on. It then becomes an adventure with the painting of how it's painted and so on. 
again using oil paint uh, this is on primed board um, oil paint left down with liquid um, but some some of it with wax and so on um, and uh, also again this is yours truly uh, this is uh, walking up the river this is two rivers coming towards coming together at the top at top of the valley coming towards you now uh, sorry coming to join become the dark uh, the Glen Cree, which eventually joins Dargle further down. But again, these are monoprints. These, there's, I've got a sheet of glass. They're 60 centimeters square, those panels. And I've got a sheet of glass, a bit bigger than that. And that's where I, I ink up the glass, lay the paper down, and do the drawing through it. So that's, that's um, uh, what there are one, two, three, four, five, five, four. There are 20 panels in that drawing. And it, again, the, the scale fascinates me. It, um, it's bigger than me, and therefore it makes me a bit humble about it. Yeah? Um, and this one is, is not uh, up from the mountains. I'm down with my feet in the water now, down at the river. But again, this is a monoprint. Uh, you, it's difficult to see the quality of it uh, on this slide. But again, the, the, the graphite is actually on the other side of the drawing. Um, so, um, again, it's, it's a way of wakening me up to the activity of drawing rather than it becoming a, a, a given or a, a something to take for granted. It's something that I find a challenge every time I do it. Um, and I don't think I'm, I'm unique in that way at all. Lots of artists are like that, I'm sure they are, uh, whether they're drawing, painting or making or whatever. Um, uh, but then back to the small, uh, these are small drawings uh, which have been turned into paintings. Again, these are small little monoprints. Um, again, yeah, trying to repossess the, um, the time of being there. Not, I don't mean just the time like 1230, but the, the, the time of spending time walking. Walking takes time to do and painting and drawing takes time to do. So they marry quite nicely there. Now, the other thing that happened that this exhibition coincided with was um, a festival in Glencree Valley called the Shaking Bog Festival organized by a lady called Catherine Nunes, and which she, she started two years ago, last year with COVID, couldn't do it. But what, what it, basically what it is, it's invites, she invites uh, writers, poets, visual artists, um, uh, musicians, uh, and they put on a festival for the weekend, um, bot botanists to do field uh, trip, uh, the trek through the, through the valley, everything which is to do with working with nature. Uh, so I was uh, thrilled to be invited to join it. Uh, so part of my, my contribution was to lead a hill walk about my exhibition. And again, what came into, into the discussion while we were talking to them was about this, this notion of nature. And, I, I, again, strongly feel that I'm just part of it. I don't stand outside it. And, I, I, I'm, I don't, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who, who believes that. Um, that we, we're all, part, we're, we're, I think that we're all part of the uh, forces of nature. Uh, and I, all I, what I hope is that this exhibition did go some way to take people back to my experiences of being up the hills, up the mountain, in the fog, and, um, walking and, and climbing through the area. Um, and I think that just about wraps me up. Um, I hope I, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> so thank you very much. Questions? Thank you, Joe. Um, you can leave the, the screen share up there or we can or we can go to um... Whatever you like, I can push you it to can, one side. You can take it off. Um, I uh, I have a question. The those last um, few black and white, the one that's twenty panels, and the one that's there, the four panels. That one. Sixty by sixty. Yeah, you you did those in place, didn't you? Uh, partly. Okay. Partly. Partly. I I um. I did no, no I, I did take them out that that size and started them, but then I finished them in the studio. Great, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, um, they're beautiful. Yeah, again, I, I, 
I, I, as I say, just to, uh, without with fear of repeating myself, I just think the activity of drawing makes you think. It makes it just makes me think about what what's out there. I mean, there's a it's sort of what's out there and what's in here, I suppose, that, and you end up with a, an aggregate of the two. Really, I, I mean, you select if you decide what to put in and what not to put in, and so on. Um, and uh, but again, I like I like things that. Uh, make me look at what I've done more, and if I uh, if I use a, use any uh, technique or whatever, it's not to just make it look nice. It's actually to me see it differently. Yeah, Steve, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, first of all, I thought the presentation was fantastic. So thank you very much, everybody. That, that was very inspirational to see and be in your landscape. <laughs> Via your work, so um, I I just had a quick uh, kind of follow up to Anula's uh, comment on the uh, the drawings, the large drawings that you did. Uh, kind of this is in the weeds, but I didn't fully understand what you were saying about the glass and how you use the glass for those. Okay, plates. okay, yeah. um, it, it's a sheet of plate glass because, uh, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but you could use plastic, but it's rigid, it's, it's uh, and it's quite heavy, so you do. Take mm -hmm. care, yeah. Um, so, and you roll it up with printing ink, mm -hmm. right? And then yeah. and you get it nice and smooth and so on, and then you let it dry as you go tacky. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Then you lay the piece of paper onto it. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you draw through that, and it picks it up on the other side. Oh, okay. Okay. Like so up. that's how it. That's how it's like the lift paper. Paper. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that, I, I really like that um, the, your explanation of uh, printing and monoprinting and the idea of this intermediary uh, uh, operation that that takes what you're trying to deliberate on or deliberately do and adds another dimension to it because it's it's that kind of deliberateness but changed by nature that I think makes things interesting in how we yeah. do things. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I totally agree that, I mean, they, they, what, you, what you get is, uh, is uh, a new thing. I remember saying to some of the people in the plein air drawing thing that try not to see the drawing as a poor relation of the real thing. Mm -hmm. It's a new real thing in its own right. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think yeah. that's, that's what drives me, that you actually yeah. enjoy the drawing itself, you know, or yeah. the painting or the making or whatever you're doing. No, uh, it's fantastic. I actually have about 200 more questions, but I will shut up. For <laughs> <laughs> well, you can email them to me if you like. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, but um, by all means, I, I mean, I'm, that goes without saying, I, I, if people who want to stay in touch in any way whatsoever, please. You know, oh, well, you thank, put, thank you very much. I, cer yeah. I certainly will. I and, really... Uh, there's no, I have right. a website that you can visit uh, and there's an email okay. on that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I look forward to that. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, thank where you. are you at the moment? Where are you based? I'm from? in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to Ireland before? Yeah, I, I have. I spent some time uh, in uh, Donegal and have oh. been to Akel Island. So I know, yeah. I know. Uh, that area in general but it was a long time ago so my memory is uh yeah. a little weak right now yeah grace grace um, oh, sorry joseph i missed the beginning now and i only saw it was only up in my email and i missed a lot of what you had to say but um i i really like drawing myself very much but when you were in situ uh, if you like did you take a lot of photographs? Because I mean, you couldn't yeah. necessarily translate the color, or did you remember the colors? No, no, I took a lot of photographs. I do, oh, okay. but I also I, I also used pastels that are oil pastels just to make notes. I tended not because uh, I'd make notes about the quality, the, the sort of color, uh, and I'd use photographs to to and I compare them with the notes I'd made to make right. sure they were reasonably accurate. But then I go on, off on an adventure. Yes, uh, and so that the paint, the the pigments, and so on would um, uh, uh, suggest other ways of showing what I've what I've been looking at. You know, so okay. yes, I would take photographs. I have a little camera, I have a phone, but I've not got used to that yet. <laughs> <laughs> and Joseph, are they 
are they are the paintings the, the finished paintings are they smaller they um, vary um, they vary uh, there's some uh the some are only like literally 35 centimeters square some are uh some of the big ones become uh big as a consequence of small panels going together right? okay. Okay. yeah i i the biggest for like for my for my exhibition I'd, I'd just done the biggest canvas i had was a meter square um but i did have a painting which was three meters by two meters but it was made up of panels okay like very much like the drawings where you had yes exactly flat. exactly okay, exactly lovely, lovely. yeah Love to see and I, it's <laughs> but what, what's it, and what's interesting about doing something that big in the studio my studio i'm in my studio now it's it's not very big it's uh it's what three meters it, it's about two, three meters by three meters that's that's the size of it with and the wall is about two meters high three meters and more mm -hmm. but this big panel painting which was uh, six four six, 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 six yeah three and a half meters wide by one two three four six by two and a half meters deep made up of 12 panels uh, five three 15 panels sorry I beg your pardon i i put it up on the wall to look at it take it down and work on it put it back up on the wall take panels down and work on them put them back again and i'd never actually seen the painting from more than about two meters away i can't stand i couldn't stand that far back and were you were you did you um sort of get a reaction when you walked a yeah. bit back when it was up well when, <laughs> well when i put it in the gallery there was only one wall it could go on <laughs> <laughs> and I was very pleasantly surprised. Actually, it it worked. It worked. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, my, my reference to it, I'm afraid, at the moment. Yeah. But it, it, that was the biggest thing I'd done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I I very frequently would um, would work work on big sheets of Fabriano, 150 centimeters by 75, and six panels of them. I mean, that one of um, in the 12 bends of the 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 ink drawing, uh, mm -hmm. was seven panels, I think, of that. Um, so I, and again, that the scale of that suggests the scale of what you use to work with. I use sponges and rags and brushes, but brushes that I made, like mm -hmm. with cotton wool on the end of sticks. <laughs> Going back to the field course days, Nula. <laughs> but the, that was that's what I I, I would do. I, I very rarely I've got brushes that I've had for like three years and never been used because it, it's. Again, it's challenging what you feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a pencil on the end of your arm, the, there's a chance it could become casual. But if you're struggling with a stick, the rag on the end, you okay. have to you have to make it do what you want it to do. Like you're, uh, you're extending the you're distancing the yeah yeah the, the, I, either up like that or on the floor. I mean, okay. I, I was yeah. very very impressed what, uh, the, uh, uh, by the artist John Virtue. Does anybody know John Virtue? Uh, he does massive drawings, massive. I mean, they're literally five or six meters by um, and canvases as well. And he literally walks across his drawings in welly boots and works on them yeah. and they're incredible so if, if you get a chance to look at, look up john virtue it's um uh it's well worth working at. for that sort of thing they're massive and they're incredibly convincing as as <laughs> um, as uh, images yeah. yeah so yeah I, and uh, it's funny it's uh i was talking to uh, anybody know camille Souter? she lives in yes. an yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh she was she was asking me about as well you know when you go on to your next project what you bring with you from the last project and I, I, I thought about it I thought, no it's like starting again it's like starting again you, and you deliberately make sure you're not just dragging a habit if you if you can you know you're dragging a habit from what you what you've accumulated mm -hmm. um, and I suppose that that's left over from my teaching days I didn't like words like sketch because it's always um, has the word in front of it, like it's only a or just a. Mm -hmm. Don't take it seriously. It would have been better if I'd had more time. And, and it's going back to uh, what so what Steve, what, um, Steve, what Steve was remarking on at this, but being deliberate rather than casual. And sketch implies a casualness to me. And not always. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a it, it can be it can be a useful thing, but it implies that 
so but it was only but it you you only try and not use it to help you you don't try and not use because you're a naughty boy it's nothing to do with that it's just to help be deliberate i think and, that, and that's me i mean that's me yeah. being me really yeah so <laughs> <laughs> thanks joseph that was great yeah good Ger geraldine has said that your plan air thanks joe and your plan air day opened up a new way of thinking about drawing for me. Um, Geraldine, are, are you feeling shy or would you like to say more about that? Oh, you put me on the spot, Nola. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Geraldine. <laughs> How are you? Nice to Hi. see you. Hi. And thank you very much. You tried very, uh, like a proper gentleman, to create an easel for me as I was struggling <laughs> to stay standing. Do you remember that? Though. But it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I know. But, you know, it actually has changed my view of drawing and I've been trying to emulate that since we left and I've done a few big square drawings. Great. Uh, at the moment I'm in Mayo and uh, I mean, the inspiration around here is just amazing. Uh, the skyscapes and the yeah. last few days have been just wouldn't blow your mind and you could easily do yeah. what you do, you know, with your squares, with yeah. some of the skies. And, but no, um, yeah, I was very tentative about drawing. I wanted to know more, and it was a side of I had never thought I hadn't thought of, and so it's kind of opened a window for me. Well, I'm delighted. Uh, that was great. As, as well as that, you were a very empathic teacher. Thank you. <laughs> very what? <laughs> you are a very empathic teacher. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, you can. Uh, there's a very. The, there's a big difference though okay i'm going back going to my teaching days where it's, uh, but it's, it's a big teaching isn't a, isn't one-way traffic you know it's not i know something you don't it doesn't work like that it's yeah. much, you know try if you've done that i mean i i one thing that came up uh in uh in my days in ncad was there was always this um people going on about intellectual intellectual art and so on and they were using intellectual as if it was like some sort of dirty word. You know, you're mm. too intellectual. You know. But it, my understanding of the word intellectual is just reasoned argument. This, the, for that, or maybe that, or perhaps that, if I did that one. But that's what we were doing when we were drawing out there. You've done yeah. that, but if you did that with that, it, because you've done that, yes, you might do that. And if you do that, well, what, what about this? Yeah. That to me is, is, is intellect, you know? And it's yeah. a thinking process, you know? And it's not a dirty yeah. word. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, one of the things that I remember you said that really hit home with me was take the picture to the edge, you know? And it, it was like it opened a door in my mind. And that the picture wasn't just that square piece of paper, but it could go further and further. And actually it's now my ambition to do something like you have done with, you know, different sheets or different sizes of, yeah. of, of, of paper. Um, and I am a teacher myself, so I do recognize when somebody's a good teacher <laughs> or a bad teacher. <laughs> well, you're very good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. It, was a, it was a delight to do that, that, uh, that workshop. I enjoyed every minute. Yeah, it was, great. it was very good. It was very good. Yeah. Thank very you. Good. Not mm -hmm. at all. You're very welcome. And I hope to see you again. <laughs> oh, please, God. I really hope so, too. Really, yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. Mm. Great, great. And good luck with everything you do. Thanks. So sorry to interrupt. Are you coming to Mayo to do any workshops? Or are you you're in the other side of the country, aren't you? Yeah. Funnily uh, enough, I uh, uh, well, I hope to do another residency at some stage um, because uh, it's a, a fantastic shot in the arm. But Bal and Glen, I'm sure the waiting list is phenomenal at the moment. Um, okay. But I, I'll. Um, but I, I certainly intend to put my name down to come to Balling Glen again. But uh, it's funny, I, you, I don't know whether you, you maybe, maybe you missed what, what I was saying about my uh, Mayo work. When I first got my residency in Balling Glen, I was, and I arrived, I'll never forget it, I drove from Ackle actually, we were a holiday in Ackle and Liz was going home and I was going there. I drove from Ackle up through Bangor Eris and so on. And I, what have I done? There's no mountains here. There's no mountains. I mean, Neffin was the nearest big mountain, you know. And I thought, and I, 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 I get, I need oxygen by climbing hills and big hills. You know? Um, so I, um, but but that that was like a shot in the arm. I, I, I then 
explored the landscape around Balling Glen. And it was very, it became richer and richer the more I explored it through doing the work about it. So, and one thing fed the other. You know, the, working in the studio suggested where I go tomorrow to go and have another look at something. You know. And I think the idea of discovering and rediscovering is a, is a good, good thing to do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, uh, I actually, fully enough, uh, we are in two weeks' time. I'll be going to uh, Kong, which is just in Mayo. It's in, it's in Galway as well. <laughs> but no, my, myself and Liz, myself and my wife, and uh, our daughter lives in um, uh, Claire, Claire Galway. Uh, so we're, we're going there for a few days to Kong in, a, in an Airbnb for a holiday. <laughs> my wife's still working, you see. I, I don't work, I only work in the studio. My wife's still working. Um, for a living as it were <laughs> uh, but um so we're, we're going to mayo then yeah, and we hope to explore lock mask and um, uh, all around there but it, it's fairly new to me that, that area in I, I know it i've been through it but in terms of exploring it it's, it's, uh, you tend to miss it on the way to Ackle, you know go through westport and mulrani and underneath yeah. you tend to go underneath it and uh, um i've been to Ackle about a hundred times and uh, have been to belmullet and down there, but not much. You know. But yes, I will be coming back to Mayo and looking. So, uh, and I, I think Nuala was saying that she may, you'd like to do more workshops, I presume. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope we do some more one day, but that's that's undecided yet. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be next year probably. So. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Well, and and Joe, I do remember we that we had some inclement weather. So I remember being on a beach, painting under a plastic sheet, very well. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and it was great because it showed you that it was possible. Yeah. And um, that there was no that there was no bad weather. That everything had to be integrated. You had to include everything. It was a really good, really good lesson to learn. So thank yeah. you. I remember one student once. Uh, uh, I, I don't know why I'm saying this, but it, it, it said um, I, I I find it difficult to find find time to work. I've got lots of things to do, and I, I just came up with it. Well, art is not something you do when you've time; it's something you make time to do, and you have to, otherwise it won't work. It won't work if you if you just again. It's back to this sort of uh, fitting it around of the things it becomes unenergized, really. But you have to take a break as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Anyway, have I rabbited on long enough? Have I? Well, yeah. Well, thank you very much. It certainly wouldn't call it rabbiting. Um, <laughs> it was a real, real pleasure uh, to see your work and to hear, um, yeah. to hear about your adventure, your journey. Yeah. So, thank you, Joe. Are there any more questions? No. Okay. Listen. Thank you very much to you all. And uh, I think I think Janet, we have one more question. Yeah. Here. No, I just wanted to say um, I saw uh, Joe's work in the Catherine Hammond Gallery in Skibbereen oh. a number of years ago, and it just left a lasting impression on me. And I just wanted to say thank you. I think I actually it, it was it was a formative um, exhibition in my in my own work. It was quite it was very inspirational. So thank thank you, Joe. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed. Thank you very much indeed for mentioning that. That's very kind of you. Thank you. It's okay. Yeah, it's very gratifying. To you. Yes, thank you. And best of luck with you. Let's see your work. Let's see your exhibition next. <laughs> well, that, absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, uh, contact me by email, please do on my website. I'd be delighted to stay in touch with you. So your, your website is? It's joe at joewilson.ie. Joe at joewilson.ie. Great. Yeah. And uh, I think it's up to date. <laughs> okay okay well thanks very much you're very welcome thank you thank you everybody uh, it's been a delight yeah thank you for listening thank you thank you thanks so much bye-bye thank bye. you bye-bye <laughs>